Each neglected PAP user that I encounter who's uninformed by the healthcare provider on when to consider BiPAP adds a little bit more weight to my heart. My, my hope is that this video will demystify any remaining doubts or uncertainties that you might have about BiPAP so that you can know whether or not trying BiPAP is the right move for you. The only reasonable place that I can begin this video is by briefly explaining what BiPAP is. The difference is in the computer in your machine. It's just software. Also, BiPAP is actually the trade name for Philips Respironics. Bi-level is the, the true name that's the same whether you're buying from Philips or from ResMed. Bi-level just refers to two different pressures. There's the pressure when you're inhaling, and then there's the pressure when you're not inhaling. So exhaling and then also just at rest. We call this IPAP, inspiratory positive airway pressure, and EPAP, expiratory positive airway pressure. If IPAP equals EPAP, then we're just on CPAP. Remember, CPAP is just a constant pressure. So if you start your CPAP machine at night and you set it to 10, it stays at 10 all night. And the difference here with BiPAP is that when you breathe in, the machine will change the pressure. And we'll get into why it does that in a moment. The other big difference between BiPAP and CPAP worth mentioning is that CPAP aims to oxygenate, whereas BiPAP aims to oxygenate and ventilate. Ventilation is just the academic way of saying, remove carbon dioxide. And the way it does this is actually in that difference between the inhale pressure and the exhale pressure, or the pressure when we're not inhaling. This is called pressure support. So if you increase that difference, that is IPAP minus EPAP, AKA pressure support, if you increase that, theoretically you increase the amount of ventilation. Where better to start looking than ResMed's clinical guidelines? Nope. Nope. Here we go. Things to consider. Consider bi-level when patient is not tolerating high pressure settings, they're pulling at the mask, they're experiencing arousals or microarousals, can't progress to REM sleep, they feel bloated or have a sensation of swallowing air. That sound familiar to anyone? Saying pressure is too high, states it's difficult to exhale despite the EPR feature being on, if events persist past 15 centimeters. Also, women may need to be switched at a lower pressure because of their increased pressure sensitivity. Now, this is an interesting remark because ResMed is essentially admitting that, you know, women, the evidence suggests that women have a higher sensitivity to the pressures. But what about the most sensitive men? And then it lists a bunch of diseases, which we're not going to get into. I mean, they're basically saying just try BiPAP if CPAP isn't working. I mean, there's, there's a little room for other interpretation here. That's a very wide net to cast. Now, my favorite part of the video, it is my and a growing group of others personal conviction that BiPAP's greatest strength lies in its ability to reduce or eliminate the respiratory effort that remains even while on CPAP. I'm sure it'll come as no surprise to you when I say that placing our finger exactly on the reason for why sleep disorder breathing results in symptoms is still somewhat unclear. And for now, we kind of have to reconcile ourselves with the middle ground and not torment ourselves over an ideal. With that said, respiratory effort seems to be a key, if not central part, for these reasons. It's from this school of thought and pool of evidence that the respiratory effort-related arousal even came into being. So what if patients who have a low arousal threshold are on PAP, but, but CPAP doesn't help reduce the amount of respiratory effort enough to the point where they're not being aroused. The idea is that BiPAP can eliminate this work of breathing and return patients to a normal amount of effort to breathe. This isn't medical advice, blah, blah, blah. Talk to your helpful doctors, blah, blah, blah. To close, I just wanna mention, most machines are capable of most modes. The pieces are there, it's just the software difference. So with a small change in software, you could actually convert a CPAP into a BiPAP. Of course, that would be against the terms and conditions of the usage of that equipment. And so I guess it was all for nothing when certain people released easy to follow instructions on the internet, which is 
written in ink on how exactly to do that. Because no one would, you know, even do that probably in the privacy of their own homes. You get the picture? <laughs>